Let's go to Galatians chapter 1 this morning. We're going to talk some more about the kingdom of God this morning. How many of you know that you've been born into the kingdom of God? According to the Bible, it says that you were born reborn into the kingdom of God and you've now entered a kingdom basically which is a spiritual kingdom and how many know that's good because you're spiritual people yes. so it's good to be in a spiritual kingdom it's good to be from a spiritual country heaven you can partake of heaven now you don't have to wait till you die and get there but there's you have access to it right now praise God and that's very very important all right Galatians chapter 1 did you find it yes. all right Galatians chapter 1 look at verse 4 it's talking about Jesus. It says, Who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of God our Father. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Notice, this tells you one of the main reasons Jesus came. It was to deliver us from this present evil world or present evil age. How many know this present evil age is a real thing? I mean, we see it going on in the world to where it is now. Everything that God does, everything that God ever did was basically for the same purpose. It was to fulfill his purpose. And his purpose was to extend the kingdom of heaven into this earth realm. That is what you're here for. That's why he's put each one of us here is to extend God's kingdom back into the earth realm. He wants to overtake the way society is now with the kingdom of God's society, which is like heaven. How many of you thinks heaven's pretty good? God always wanted heaven and earth to be the same, but Adam messed that up when he sinned, of course, and earth basically lost the divine nature of God on the inside and mankind became sinners. But now since we can be born again, how many of you know you can be born again? How many of you have been born again? Amen. Praise God. And when you did that, you entered back into the kingdom of God. And when you did that now, basically, we can once again extend God's kingdom into this earth realm. God does not want to come here to do it. He wants us to do it. Oh, always get a lot of amens on that. Amen. Yeah. We didn't do it. Praise God. We're the ones that are supposed to be doing it. What God did was took his spirit, who's invisible, put him in man's spirit, who's invisible, put man in a physical body, which is visible, in an earth realm, which is visible, to transport what's invisible into the visible realm through invisible spirits. Are you following me? Yeah, that's what it's all about. That's why it's been transported in here. That's why you need to learn in, to live inside out. That's right. Amen. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. See, you cut off your connection when you start getting into the world and the things going on in the natural and everything going on out here because these things shouldn't bother us because we have control over those things by the power of God and the nature of God on the inside of us. So we need to stay hooked up in our phone line with heaven. That's why you need to stay built up in your spirit. I mean, you know, sometimes we're hot, it seems like, in our spirit, and sometimes we don't even know if we got one. <laughs> Come on, anybody ever been there? It's up and down. It's an up and down. It's a battle to stay in the spirit. It's a battle to, to know who you are and to receive from the spirit of God. But that's where we make our headway is by getting our communications from our communication center, which is the spirit of God and, and Father God, who gives it to the spirit of God who's on the inside of us, transfers to our spirit, and then we can function in the natural because we have a natural body. You know, God is not even legal in this earth realm without a physical body. That's why Jesus basically had to come in a physical body to deliver man because God couldn't do it outside somebody who had a physical body. So when Jesus came in that physical body, he could do that. How many know well, another good thing about that? God's not legal here, but neither is the devil. That's right. Yeah. See, he's, he's illegal. He don't belong here unless he uses somebody with a body. That's right. See, the devil hasn't written any bad books. The devil hasn't killed anybody. The devil hasn't offended anybody. But people who have been influenced by the devil have. See? So the battle on this earth is basically over me and you. Is that exciting? Is that, you know how important you are? I mean, you're important. you got everybody after you. you got God, you got the devil after you. What are they trying to do? Do influence here in this natural realm. He's trying to make it an evil age that we live in, in an evil world, and God's trying to bring heaven back into this earth realm through the same thing, through the new nature that we have now on the inside when we were born again. You're no longer a sinner anymore. You're no longer a loser anymore. You're no longer a servant anymore. You're a son of the living God. You're more than a conqueror, the Bible says. You have power over all the authority of the devil and all these things belong to us. Say they belong to us. And how many of you got them by being real good and doing something? No. You got them through the blood of Jesus Christ who provided them for you. These are all things that came to us in our inheritance and they belong to us. So basically Jesus had to come and not only did he have to restore the opportunity for us to be born again but he had to defeat an enemy. 
Who was that? That was a prince of darkness. That was Satan himself. The Bible says he spoiled principalities and powers. And he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. How many know he defeated the devil? The Bible in Hebrews says he brought him to naught who had. Say had. He had the power of death, but no longer does. So that the enemy's been defeated. He's already taken out on our part. Our job is to influence and, and, and make the, the, the defeat good in our life. In other words, back it up. In other words, not fall away from it. Not go into unbelief. And one of the biggest things I think in the body of Christ, more than anything, you know, we talk about offense and forgiveness. How about just simple unbelief? We have trouble believing the goodness of God. God is good all the time. Well, he, he, he filled you with his spirit. Well, I don't know if he's that good. He made you more than a conqueror. I don't really might know if he's that good or not. I mean, he's good, but I don't know if he's that good or yeah. Everything the Bible says that he did belongs to you. It's part of your inheritance, and it belongs to you right now. It was provided by grace. Say grace. grace. Now notice, grace is what God has freely provided for each and every one of us through what Jesus did on the cross. These are free gifts to us. How many got saved by grace? Amen. How many got good enough to be saved? Nope. No. It was by grace, wasn't it? It was a free gift given by what Jesus provided for us, and that's what we use our faith for. Our faith is to receive the things that grace has provided for us. I'll say that again. Faith, your faith, is to receive the things that Jesus paid for, the grace that he's given to you. Are they for a house? They could be, but not necessarily. Are they for your bills? Not necessarily. Are they for your monthly paycheck or weekly paycheck? Not for really. They are to receive what God has already provided for you in your divine nature so that you can operate as a kingdom citizen here on the earth. So I use my faith to receive the righteousness that God provided for me, the holiness that God provided for me, the victory that God provided for me, the power that God provided for me. That's what my faith is in. And if I walk in all these things that God gave me, how many of you know you're not going to have to struggle with many of the things that you're struggling with and praying for right now? When I first got saved, all I was taught for was to put faith to get things from God. Get your money from God. Get this from God. Get that from God. Well, when I started seeking the kingdom first and what God wanted, I said what God wanted. What God wanted. See, if all your prayers are for what you want, you're missing it. That's right. Okay. Your prayer should be what he wants. Notice, you were created for him. He wasn't created for you. That's right. Mm -hmm. But we've been taught that sometimes in faith that we just got to believe God and we don't receive. We've got to believe him harder and we don't believe him. We've got to confess more. But no, all these things have been freely provided for each and every one of us. You're holy this morning whether you like it or not. Amen. You're blessed this morning whether you like it or not. Now, whether you activate it in your life, and that's what faith does. Faith activates the grace in your life. So if I'm in a battle with something in my mind, let's say I'm in battle with sickness and disease, I'm going to have to believe the grace that was provided for me, which is divine health. How many know he provided divine health? Amen. How many know the devil wants you to be afraid all the time so you don't live in divine health? I'll tell you, if you're fearful all the time, you'll be sick all the time. Oh, yeah, that's right. It doesn't matter how good you are, how wonderful you are, how, how many vitamins you take or anything else. You live in fear, you'll be sick because that's of the enemy and it's the opposite of faith. So I want to have faith. I want to have faith in my healing and be in divine health. So when sickness comes against me, I can either keep my belief in the grace or put my belief in my feelings. Come on. Yeah. Right? And if I put my faith in my feet, I'm sick. I'm down and out. God cannot help you. Listen, cannot, because you have no faith in what the blood has provided, which is the grace of healing that he already gave you. Are you following me? That's right. Now, you can go to the doctor. You can do whatever you want in the natural realm, but you're going to get no provision from the spirit realm unless you're in agreement with the spirit realm. How many ever had a friend who disagreed with you on everything, and how many know they didn't remain your friend very long? <laughs> Right? It's a beautiful day. I don't like this day. Well, I like this guy. I don't like that guy at all. I mean, you didn't get, you ever see that. Even when they called, you blocked it. <laughs> and it's the same way. We've got a fellowship and relationship with God, and, and one of us got to come into agreement with the other. That means either he's going to change or we're going to change. How many have tried to change him? How many know he didn't, didn't work? I mean, we had a change. So we had to line up with him. So the Bible says, by his stripes I've been healed. The Bible says that, you know, the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of me. The Holy, the, the, I received power when the Spirit of God came upon me. Do you have power this morning? Yes. How about when you don't feel like it? Yes. How about when something comes against you? Yes. See, that, that's where you got to stay because in this natural world, it's going to come against you. How many of you know that? As long as we're here now, when you die, you won't have to fight too many battles anymore because you'll be in heaven. There's no sickness, no disease, no nothing up there. But down here in the earth, we're fighting that battle, basically basically, which is simply the Word of God versus your feelings and your emotions and this world. So Jesus came to deliver us from this present evil world. How's He going to deliver us? He's going to have to deal with something called our mind. Say our mind. mind. 
If you're not in the Word of God and getting your mind renewed, you're probably never going to operate in the Word of God because it's so anti from what the world does. You're, you're going to be born again, but you're going to live as someone who's unborn again. It's just the way it is. You're going to live that way in your health and your finances and everything else because you're not hooked up to the main source, which is heaven itself. I mean, you know, nobody's suffering for, from lack in heaven. Right. Nobody's sick in heaven. Nobody's demon-possessed in heaven. Everybody in heaven's doing just fine. Well, we have access to everything that they've got in heaven because you're a citizen of that country. So since I have access to that, I can access things from there. I want to access things from down here. Right. Ain't nothing down here that I want. I want the things that are already in heaven and belong to me. And heaven isn't something you take advantage of when you go there. It's when you take advantage of when you're born into it and become a citizen. Amen. How many of your citizens today? Yeah. Aren't you glad you got access to something bigger than this world? Yeah. Bigger than what every report is? Yeah. We can live above that realm spiritually, but you're going to have to stay in the spirit in order to do that in your life because every time you get pulled in the natural, how many know it's easy? Yeah. Pulled back into the natural. And when you have a symptom, how many know that's tough? How many know when you don't feel good, that's tough? How many know when you're down and out and you feel down and out and you feel like getting depressed that day and calling everybody and telling them you're depressed that day so that they can get depressed with you and pat you on the back and all be depressed for that day? How many know it, it's easy to do that? But we can't do that because the Bible says this is a day that the Lord has made. I will get depressed and be glad for it. Rejoice! No, I will rejoice and be glad in it. So if you rejoice and be glad in it, that spirit of depression is going to fly right over your head and go find somebody else down the street or you can receive it. So you've got a powerful choice in your life every single day of everything that comes your way. Everything you've got an opportunity to choose. You can choose health. You can choose wealth. You know, in the Old Testament, it said, choose this day. Well, this shouldn't have been too tough. Life and blessing, death and curse. But the next verse, God had to tell us. Don't that make you feel stupid? He says, you can have life, death, blessing, curse, but let me help you. Choose life. I think that, that demeans me a little bit. I think I probably could have figured that one out by myself without taking any more courses. But he told us why. Because many people are choosing death and a curse and not understanding the curse. That one song we sing this morning about, Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. What I like about that, it's the only song I ever found that, that, uh, that lifts up the generational blessing. From generation to generation. Everybody wants to tell you about generation. Your grandpa did this, and your uncle did that, and your great uncle did that. I don't care. They're dead and gone right now, and I choose not to operate in anything that they operated in because I'm a born again, spirit filled Christian, a citizen of the kingdom of God, and I'm going to walk into things of God. Praise God. I don't have to be an alcoholic anymore just because my whole family and relation was. I don't have to stay there, and I don't have to claim it and blame them for it. Oh, it's not my fault. Yes. My grandpa. Grandpa's fault. Come on. My great grandpa's fault. No, it's your fault because you're making that choice. And since you're born again, that generational curse has been broken off you and off your family and off your grandkids and off everybody else. And there's no reason why that should come in your family again. So don't don't lift up the curse. Why not lift up the blessing? Amen. From generation to generation, praise God. Let's pass down the, the generational blessing rather than the generational curse. Hallelujah. All right, go to Luke, Luke chapter 17. Leave me alone this morning. You guys are pulling on me this morning. Like it or not, I'll tell you, there's going to be a victorious generation walking upon this earth in this last day, and they're going to be casting out devils less than right. You're going to walk down the street, and somebody with the devil's going to walk by you, and the devil's going to come out of them, because basically they're so afraid that you're going to come over there and do something about it. And the power of God is just going to be seen on people pretty soon at this time. It's not going to be having something that you explain. It's something that's already on you. And, and it gets in your bones, the Bible says. It gets in the marrow of your bones, your joints. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right, we're not teaching on the anointing. Luke 17. <laughs> For more information, Wednesday night at 7 30. <laughs> All right, Luke chapter 17, look at verse 20. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God comes not with observation, neither shall they say, Lo, it's over here. Lo, it's over there. For behold, the kingdom of God is where? Within it's within us. Notice, the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God's in power. It's on the inside of you. It lives and dwells on the inside of you. It's not because of the proofs out here. The proofs out here because of the proof is what is in here. So as I put my faith in what's in me, I will start seeing proofs out here come on but but see we want to see proofs out here and then we want to believe 
But we don't have to. You've got something on the inside of you. You've got the kingdom of God on the inside of you, the power on the inside of you. So the takeover that God is doing in the earth realm today has nothing to do with physical territories. We see that in religion, don't we? We got this Islam fighting Judaism. We got this fighting that, trying to take their territory, trying to take their stuff. The kingdom of God doesn't have anything to do with earth, taking over earth, because it's already God's. Is that right? The earth and everything in it belongs to the... So why should he fight to take back what's already his? He's not fighting anything in the earth. He's going after men's hearts. Amen. Going after their ideas. Uh, James talked this morning about being blinded. How many know there's some blinded people out there who don't know anything about God? How many know there's blinded people out there who know something about God? It, it talks about unbelievers, but I know a lot of believers who are just as blind as the ones who are out there, basically. So our job is to break that blindness off of them so that they can see spiritual things. The Bible says if you enter the kingdom, you can then, if you're born again, you can see the kingdom of God. Well, that means if I'm not born again, I cannot see the kingdom of God. So they can't see it. But we can. If we're not seeing the kingdom of God, how many know it's our fault? Because we're not reading a spiritual book. We're not praying in the spirit. We're not doing the spiritual things there. So it's a spiritual takeover of man's hearts and man's lives and man's. And it's so good as being a pastor because a lot of times I get to see it. I mean, people come in here are a total disaster, and they get born again, and three years later, I tell you, they are on fire for God. They talk different. They walk different. They're doing things for God. They're, they're going places. They're, I mean, that, that shows me that it can happen. How many of you know that? Yes, right. People say, well, they're so bad, I don't think anything good, that God can do anything for them. Well, let's go back to where you were. Yeah. <laughs> How many God does it take to deliver you? Quite a few. We were all a mess at one time, wasn't there? Well, I don't think I'm that bad. Let me tell you, there's not air conditioning units in hell. <laughs> Some people think, well, I'm going to be in the upper chamber. They got good air there, but down below, it's hot now. No, it's hot everywhere. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have anything to do with us. It has to do with receiving what he's already given us, which is an inheritance that has been given to each and every one of us. How many know that you have an inheritance? Yeah. All right, go to Matthew 25. All right, Matthew chapter 25. Notice it's in red, so Jesus is speaking. Look at verse 34. It says, Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, and inherit the kingdom prepared for you from where? The foundation. foundation of the world. So this is very important here. He says, From the foundation of the world, man's inheritance was already made available for him. That tells me that heaven that I was taught is not my inheritance. Jesus that I was taught is not my inheritance. My inheritance is the kingdom that was there before the foundations of the world. So what happened basically? Adam and Eve were created in that kingdom. They had the kingdom on the inside of us. But when they fell and failed, they lost the spirit of God. They lost their dominion. They even lost the kingdom at that time. That's what Jesus came back. So Jesus came back not to restore heaven to us, although how many know that's important? Yes. He didn't come to restore himself to us. He never preached himself. You can't find it. He preached the kingdom of God. The church preaches heaven. The church preaches Jesus. Well, what about the kingdom of God? That's, the inherit that's our inheritance. The kingdom of God. And it's been there since the foundation of the world. So it's not something we're going to get when we get to heaven. Or else it will be here after we went to heaven. Are you following me? No, it was here before the foundation of the world. It was already here. The opportunity to live in the kingdom of God has been around even at the foundation of the world. So everybody's taught when we get to heaven, then we're going to get all these things. No, when you get born into the kingdom of God, you get all these things. And you become an inheritor of those things that Jesus provided. The day that you got born again, everything now belongs to you by inheritance. Say, by inheritance. It belongs to each and every one of us. So notice, it's been provided for us. So when I entered the kingdom of God, I got a great inheritance. It was given to me. It came to me. And that inheritance basically is what we have. Now the thing is, if you don't know what you inherited, how many know you're not going to take advantage of what you inherited? Come on, you've got a rich aunt. Boy, she's a millionaire. And you're the only heir. And she dies. Of course, you're sad. And then you're happy. <laughs> And everything's left you. And she lives in California. How many know you'd be on the next plane? 
not caring what it costs to see what your inheritance is. But we get born into the kingdom of God and the church tells us that heaven is our, is our inheritance. So now what do I do from the day that I got born in to the day that I die and go to heaven? Just sit around and wait. I can't wait till I get my inheritance. I can't wait till I get healed. I can't wait till I get blessed. I can't wait till I do all that. No, the day that you entered the kingdom of God, all these things became yours by the power of God on the inside of you. Now what am I going to have to do? I'm going to have to agree with him. How many of you know? Yep. No sense arguing with him. Uh, by my stripes you're healed. I am not. Yes, you are. Yeah, I am not. You're holy. I am not. Yes, you are. Arguing with God never got me anywhere. I don't know if it's worked for you. But it hasn't done a thing for me. It doesn't work that way. So we have an inheritance. And this was before the foundation of the world. God wanted you to live in a kingdom that was just like heaven itself in the earth realm. Everybody says, well, I just feel the earth should be a utopia. You're right, it should be. Yeah. But Adam screwed it up. So it's not a utopia. But we're here to bring back the utopia. Say, I'm a utopia deliverer. I'm a utopia deliverer. But first of all, how do you know it's going to have to be delivered in our own lives? Amen. Yes. Oh, yeah. And as delivered in our own lives and we find out what we got, then we go out in power and do what we need to do is to extend the kingdom of God. And the Bible talks about, go to Ephesians chapter 1. And this is stuff you've got to stay on top of and you've got to stay with. You know, if for some reason the world can pull on you, can suck on you, can get the things out of you and you don't, you don't just don't get it. You don't get it done. But that's why sometimes I've got to put on my No More Bad Day shirt. That's right. Why? Because I'm just about ready to have one, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so I put the T-shirt on. No more bad days. Praise, praise God. And then you start to get angry and somebody walks up. I like that shirt. And you forgot what you even had on. Oh, God, that's right. I had no more bad days on. I, what I was thinking of. Yeah, that's a good shirt. All right, Ephesians chapter 1. Look at verse 17. Paul's praying here. He says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his, say his. Amen. Notice not your calling, his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance is in the saints. So Paul's praying. He's not praying for man to get an inheritance. He's not praying for man to get anything. He's praying for man to get an understanding standing and revelation to have the blinders removed off of our eyes to see the wonderful inheritance that God has already given us through Jesus Christ his son and it goes on to say look at verse 19 and what is the exceeding greatness to us word who believe according to the working of the mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he did what raised him from the dead that means today you have the power the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead I mean it's the same spirit yep. we didn't get the B spirit and he, he had the A spirit we got the Holy Ghost on the inside so we've got resurrection power power on the inside of us today. The problem is we've been taught that we don't have it and that God has all the power and God does have a lot of power, but he can't use his power because he can't function in the earth realm without somebody in their suit. See, we're the devil's biggest helpers through the teaching and stuff that we don't understand according to the Bible. So he prayed here, you need to get a revelation of this stuff. Why is that? Because when you get a revelation, how many know you're going to start operating in it? Let's face it, every, everything you receive in the spirit realm, you had to find out about it. It just didn't fall on you. Amen. It came to you when you learned about healing, when you learned about deliverance, when you learned about peace, when you learned about joy. It wasn't you just walking along in despair and all at once peace fell off the peace tree and hit you in the head and all at once you had it. No, it came from information. Say information. information. I mean, no, information and revelation and then wisdom on top of that of how to use the revelation that you get. But you're not going to get revelation from the 6 o'clock news. Amen. You're going to get some revelation, but it's not the kind you want. No, it comes from this Word of God. It comes from people teaching the Word of God and the power of God to break the blindness off of us, praise God. How can, you, how, how can the blind lead the blind? See, and when most of the church is blind anyway, they're trying to lead people into their blindness and don't understand. But the more free you get, the easier it is to tell people about what's going on in this world realm and what happens when you get born into the kingdom of God and how and you just don't enter heaven, but you enter a kingdom that already belongs to you. Say, I have a great inheritance. Okay, go to John chapter 10. We even sing some of the old songs. <laughs> some of them old songs. Coming back to me at times, and I was singing all the time. I thought, what was I doing? 
You know, nobody knows the trouble I see. Nobody knows but Jesus. And then I thought, and he don't care anyway. Because <laughs> I'm still walking through the same troubles. So this song ain't helping me. He ain't helping me. Nobody's helping me. I didn't know I had the ability to do it. But I was too busy blaming God. I know none of you all ever blame God for anything. But there's times that I did back in the old days. All right, John chapter 10. Look at verse 7. Jesus again. Then said Jesus unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door for the sheep gate. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enters in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes not but to steal, to kill and destroy, and I have come that they may have, and they may have it more. All right, what's he talking about? He's talking about he is the way into the kingdom of God. He is the door, he says, into the kingdom of God. How did I get into the kingdom of God? I got it through what Jesus Christ already did. But not only was he the way, he's the truth in the kingdom and he's the life in the kingdom. So basically, I need to go beyond just my immediate burning bush experience of getting born again to find out what's beyond Jesus in the kingdom of God that already belongs to me in there. It's like you entered a mansion and in that mansion there's peace in this room and joy in that room and healing in that room and all these things in the room but we stop at the door Come on. Do you have Jesus? Yes, I have Jesus. How are you doing? Terrible, but I've got Jesus. I'm going to heaven. Someday, someday it's going to be all better. There's going to be peace. There's going to be joy. Going to be... So we stop right there not understanding that, that Jesus is our way into. He's the door. So people come in. People go out. People can come in. People can go out. But you're supposed to go to a place where you not only have life. Come on now, but you have life more abundantly. Life more abundantly is the kingdom lifestyle, not the Christian lifestyle. Most Christians are miserable. Let's just face it. It's hard to find one full of joy anywhere. Why is that? Because they're living in religiosity most of the time, trying to acquire things from God that they already have. It already belongs to them. It's already ours. It's very difficult to get something from someone that you've already got. Well, I prayed for power for years. I prayed for the anointing for years. And then I went to the Word and it told me that I had an anointing. It told me I had power. It told me I had healing. But I was still praying for it because I was so blinded to the natural... Come on. Rather than the spiritual and the word of God had already told me. Once I started agreeing with God in the kingdom of God, all those things started to be broken off of my life. Self-deliverance. Say self-deliverance. Self -deliverance. See, every time you go from the lie to the truth, you know what happens? You get free. That's what the Bible says. So every time I switch over, basically, and I understand a new truth, and once, once we run into it, say, hey, I don't have to live outside my peace anymore. I don't have to go around getting mad every time she says this or he says this. And I'm talking to the couples now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you've conditioned yourself so many times to get mad at that what they say, and you tell them not to say it, but you know in your heart they're going to say it anyway and do it anyway, you know? Let's, let's be on time. Come on, we're going to be on No, not on time. Not going to be on time. Uh, tomorrow, what time are you leaving? Uh, what makes a difference? <laughs> what time are you leaving? What makes a difference? We're leaving when you get ready. <laughs> right? Am I right? So there's no sense me getting mad when she's not on time. I might as well just... So I go to the rocking chair now and I just sit there and pray in tongues. And then when we're five minutes late, I'm praying in tongues. Ten minutes late, I'm praying in tongues. Fifteen, I get up. I still got the peace of God. I can go out the door. You know, I got, got to go to the hospital to get somebody, get somebody delivered. They called. They're very sick. And you know, I'm in, in the chair. Oh, my God. Are you ready yet? <laughs> and then you go try to deliver somebody. You need deliverance. <laughs> Right. Oh. You want to go further? When people come on their way to church. Yeah. We used to go to a church in Orlando. Went up to Benny Hinn's church for a while. You don't think that was a long two hours to get in a fight before we got there. <laughs> With two kids in the back seat throwing shoes at my head as I drove down the road. I'm not going to say which one. <laughs> But I still got a couple marks right here in this area. 
Yeah, you lose your peace, you lose your joy and everything. Then you want to go out and do, I'm going to do God's work today. <laughs> no, it don't, it don't work that way. We've got to learn to take control over these feelings and emotions with the anointing of God that we have on the inside. You don't have to, and you can, you can figure out your patterns, what gets you that you've got to deal with. And the only way you think you're going to deal with it is if they change. So you might as well forget it. Whether it's a co-worker, whether it's a boss, whether it's somebody else, they ain't going to change, praise God. You might as well just get used to handling that situation. Come on now. That's what the kingdom is. The kingdom is ruling over situations and circumstances in your life, just not going to heaven someday and living in hell for the next 30 years while you're down here. We're supposed to have life and life more abundantly. abundantly. Well, I want abundant life then if it's available to me. And I did it through coming to the door of Jesus Christ, basically. So I'm going to have to do some changing. How many know that's done by the Spirit of God on the inside of us? You have the Spirit of God. How many know He's working on you all the time? Working in you, on you, over you, everything. Everything that you do in your daily life can be an experience to help you grow. Just think, if you never had any difficulties, never anything, you'd never grow. That's right. You wouldn't even need faith. See? You just walk, walk in peace and joy all the time. But we live in an earth right now where there's obstacles, there's things coming, there's situations and circumstances. And we want to continue to walk in the anointing and walk in the kingdom of God, receive our inheritance so that we're in a position to help others when the time comes. Because how many of you, you don't know when that time's going to come? You don't know when you're going to run into that one person God's going to say, they need help right now, and you can't pray for 15 minutes to try to get help now. And basically, it's a lifestyle. Do you know what I mean? You don't have to pray for an hour in the Holy Ghost. I mean, when I used to run that prayer meeting there, uh, I was taught by some preachers that, you know, before they taught, they, they, they prayed in tongues and read the word for three hours before they did their preaching. Well, I got a Thursday night meeting and all the older guys quit and I ended up the head of the thing in like two months after I got saved and, and I'm getting ready to go and I'd come home from work and it's Thursday night and I get home about five o'clock and things at seven o'clock and I'd go to the bedroom and I'd shut that door, bless God, and I'd lock the door and, and one of the little kids would come up and knock on the door and I'd what's the matter with you? Don't you know I'm a holy man of God and I'm studying? I've got to teach tonight. I've got to teach tonight. I'm teaching. Get these kids out of here. I'm a teacher tonight. <laughs> and by the time I got there, I couldn't teach anything because I was all messed up. Praise God. Hallelujah. I remember. Can I tell you a story? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, this ain't about you. This ain't about this is, a, this is a Rodney story. Rodney was on stage one time. There was about eight pastors there or whatever, and everybody was teaching, and the guy got up, and he talked about this, and he talked about that, and he talked about this. And Rodney was sitting there so long, and he flew in that day and stuff that he actually fell asleep. <laughs> Taking a little nod on the stage. And the guy then probably said, and now, now here we go. And now Rodney Howard Brown, who is deep in the spirit right now coming. <laughs> the guy took so long, Rodney dozed off, praise God, because he was just going through all this rigmarole stuff. And then he gets up and he says about three words and the power of God hits that place. People are falling out in the spirit. And trust me, he wasn't praying in tongues, he'd been napping. He was <laughs> And sometimes we think we've got to work ourselves up into the spiritual place to do something. No, you just got to remain and retain the spiritual place that you're already in. You don't have to put yourself up. You just got to stay here, for God's sake. Now, sometimes you've got to pull yourself out. But once you get there, you don't have to put yourself up. Because you've already been made up by what Jesus did on the cross and put you in an up place. You have been raised and seated in heavenly places, far above all principality, power, might, and dominion, and everything. Every single name that's named. That's your position. We're just maintaining that position. We don't have to go any higher than that. But you have to do some spiritual things in order to maintain that. Right? And like when Jesus came, Jesus said, uh, I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world. And then later on, he said, those that are born are not in, they're in this world, but they're not. So you're not even of this world. You're just in here. You're, you're an, uh, if you choose to take this mission. <laughs> You've been put in here to extend God's kingdom as an undercover spiritual heavenly kingdom citizen and son of God in God and sons, basically, with the Holy Ghost as a CEO to transform this earth realm and to change this earth realm and to get to them one at a time, two at a time, ten at a time, twenty at a time, thirty at a time, forty at a time. Praise God. However we can do it. We still give out the books. I thank you guys. You're getting them out there. We've probably got over 2,000 of them in, in 
in right now. The, the next book, we're down to our last three chapters. I've been working poor Mary to the bone. We're down to chapters 13, 14, 15, and then we'll be able to enter that pretty soon, and they do whatever they do and everything else. So that one should come out too, and that one is total kingdom from start to finish. Just about the kingdom of God and what we teach and what we preach, and praise God. Hallelujah. I'm sure you're, I'm sure you're going to enjoy it, because I'm enjoying it. Praise God. <laughs> I know the writer personally, and I want you to know he's a real good... He's a good guy. He does all right. But what are we going to do with that book? We're going to get it made, and then we're going to start giving it out again. We don't want money. We don't want anything else. We want to get the kingdom of God. And as long as we're doing kingdom things, how many know the money will be there? Yeah. It's just always there. Well, where's it going to come from? I don't care where it comes from. It's not my responsibility. It's his responsibility to promote his own thing. Praise God. Hallelujah. So what are we doing? We're changing. Say we're changing. We're changing. But notice the change takes on the inside. The kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God can get in your feelings. It can get in your emotions. Not only your thought life, but everything in your body. Your body was created in the beginning as someone wholly righteous with God's nature on the inside. It was never created to handle stress. Never created to handle offense. Never created to handle these things. That's why there's so much sickness and disease in the body of Christ. Because people don't understand. Well, God don't heal me. Well, you're how many people you offended at? About 32 people? I mean, it ain't going to work that way. Praise God. It just don't work that way. So what are we going to do? We've got to change that. Praise God. We've got to understand. We've got to understand <laughs> that the Spirit of God is on the inside of us. That's right. And we're going to, you know, there, there's going to be battles that come. But we've got the victory already on the inside. It's not something that we're going to have to get some time. It's something that we have. Isn't that right? Tell them. Tell them. Okay. That's right. Okay. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> He's not heavy. He's my grandson. <laughs> So anyway, there's changes being done in it each and every day, each and every one. Go to this book, get yourself a highlighter, read the Bible. And whenever you see something that belongs to you, underline that stuff. Just as if you were collecting money. Money isn't what you need. You need God's nature on the inside of you that's already on the inside of you that we agree with. Yep, not that page. Want to go here? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So we're changing each and every day, right? Yeah. I mean, you know you have an inheritance, right? Yeah. Praise God. You're going to seek out that inheritance start walking in it, right? Yeah. And we're going to change the world around us. Is that right? Yeah. All right. Let's pray this morning. Father, we just thank you and praise you and glorify you for what you're doing in our lives and in our hearts. We thank you that we are in this time and this day. We know that we're here for our divine purpose. We know we're here to fulfill whatever you want us to do. And we thank you for the revelation of who we are, what we can do, and the power that we have on the inside of us. And we give you the praise for everything that you do. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. All right.